right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dr. Emily Latran, who is close by me up in Pasadena in California. How are you doing, Dr. Emily? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's such an honor to uh, be on your show and uh, I intend to bring some great insights into running your business. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and Emily is a keynote speaker, a high, high performance coach and dentist. I think you're the first time we've had a dentist on the show, um, <laughs> which, you know, which normally I like uh, whenever, you know, I, I see a dentist, I start to sweat. So um, I think today, at least today, you're, <laughs> we're talking about something other than dental work. <laughs> and what we're going to talk about is is uh, as Emily's an international keynote speaker and a high performance coach. And we're going to talk about high performance teams and high performance leaders. So, um, Emily, what is the, what are the, in your mind, what is the essence of a high performing leader or a high performing team? What are the characteristics and traits? Yes, um, there are several characteristics that contribute to a high performance leader, but some of the main ones, and those are the ones that I usually focus on when I'm coaching my clients. The first one is clarity, meaning you know exactly what's important to you, you know your values, you set your goals, because as you know, sometimes we hear something's good, right? This is fast track to doing something, and sometimes it makes us get into misalignment with our core and our values, and that's where people get frustrated and they start not believing in themselves, that kind of thing. So clarity is very, very important. Then it is energy. Um, you, you might want to do, do 10 things, but you're totally tired after five things. Right? Right. And let's say you want to work with somebody internationally and you just can't bring the energy to talk to them. If it's across time zones, that kind of a thing. And, and, it, and then I'm not talking about, taking some boost energy booster or, or, or drinking coffee all day. I'm talking about understanding your energy level and, and constantly be recharging, right? And um, think a, a particular way, take certain breaks, so that way you're, you're basically renewing yourself every hour. You're right. working long hours or long days. Um, productivity is always very, very important. And productivity in high performance, we're talking about intentions being very mm -hmm. intentional about what you're going to do how you're going to do it not letting people sidetrack you and influence is also a big part how you're going to position yourself as a leader somebody who's different somebody that other people should listen to and so that way when you ask people to do something when you're encouraging or, mm -hmm. or inspiring them they actually will take those actions right and, and not just, not just listening and say oh that's that's mm -hmm. a good speaker <laughs> So I, I think, I, just going back to the first point you made about clarity, I think that's an incredibly important one for people to focus in on because I think you, often people are surprised. Uh, they think they have clarity on something. They think they know what they're doing or the direction that they're going. But when you actually sit down and really dig into it, it turns out that there, that maybe, as you say, there's a, there's a misalignment between different members of the team, different people are, have interpreted things differently. So getting clarity is incredibly important, right? Yes, yes. Because also, for example, let's say, uh, I'll give you an example. If I'm talking to, let's say a dentist, and they mm -hmm. say, oh yeah, my, my goal is to, to do a million dollar a year. Yeah. If I ask, well, why don't you want 5 million, right? Or why don't you want 10 million? Like why, mm -hmm. why are you stopping at a million? A lot right. of times the answer is, oh, it's because that's what everybody's talking about, right? They have a million dollar practice. So there was no concrete reason why they want to get to a certain level for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a very simple example. Or, or if somebody, somebody say, well, I want to grow this business real big, uh, but I'm stressed because, you know, I don't have time for my family. Well, then you need yeah. to get into that exercise where you ask yourself, which one is more important and, yeah. and why is it important? Then you make your decisions based on those. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point uh, there because uh, yeah, if you say, well, I want to have a ten million dollar business, but I'm but I'm also a little bit stressed about how much time you know how the impact it'll have on my family, it means that you haven't made the choices necessary. You haven't decided, okay, 
if 10 million business is important to me, then the compromises I'm going to have to make are is impact on my family. Or as you say, I say, okay, not prepared to make those. Therefore, I need to um, scale this back and maybe aim for a $5 million or a $3 million business or whatever it is. Because people just don't right. like making choices, do they? Right, right. It'd be, or if, if part of that decision includes you have to grow your team, which yeah. means you have to let go <laughs> of some yeah. of your control. And then people don't want to let go, right? So they, they, get, they get into their own self-conflict and they mm. can't make the decision. But if, you, if they actually take the time and really visit their values, and this is mm-hmm. this value is not, not going to change quarterly. Right? This right. is going to be something that but whenever we talk to you, we, we will get that feel that that's important to you. Then a lot of times, those are the people that you see being successful. They'll, they'll just take those micro steps, and then and, and we, we call it you know, being on, in the grind, right? But they'll mm. get to where they want because they know exactly what's important to them. Yeah. And do you think, uh, I mean, a lot of people, if you said, what are your core values? I don't, I think there's a lot of people who wouldn't be able to answer that immediately. Um, So when you work with people, how do you help them dig down and really find out what their core values really are? Well, you know, the core values would be something that is very important to them that they can violate. So Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If, if somebody say, well, one of my core values is, is, I think it's trust, right? Then I will have some questions asking them, questioning about their trust, whether they trust themselves to start, to start with. Because some mm, people yeah. don't trust themselves, right? And then do you trust your spouse? Do you trust your team leader? Like, like if you're going to go away for a week to attend a conference, will you trust your office manager or your team leader or supervisor to make those decisions and only call you when it's, you know, the building's on fire. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and so when I ask those kind of questions, like, like they say, oh yeah, trust is important to me. And when I ask them the question about trusting their team, they actually don't really trust their team. Mm-hmm. Right? They, they don't operate based on trust like that. Then we have to say, okay, so you say you trust, but your behaviors are not in alignment with what you're saying. Um, so is it actually important to you? Right. And, and no. to get them to understand that from their own perspective and based on their experience, I think it becomes very valuable instead of me imposing on them, you know what, if you want to grow your business, you need to trust people. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and if they don't already have, that's not important to them. That's not something that they, they cannot live without kind of thing. Then yeah. uh, it's going to be hard to grow without that value. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a great point because, I mean, I think sometimes people do sort of um, pay lip service to their values, as you said. I mean, maybe, the, as you right. said, they'll say, you know, trust is a core value, but in fact, it's not because they're never going to trust their teams or they, yeah. you know, they actually want, they like being completely in control of everything. They like to micromanage or whatever. Therefore, if that's the case, then, yeah, trust isn't, isn't a core value of ours, and that's fine. Right, right, but they might go... Uh, in turn, they w- they would ask their customers to trust them, right? Yeah, 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 so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's where it's not uh, in alignment. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, I want to I want to be able to trust my dentist. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then the interesting thing that you you mentioned about energy, and I think this is I think this is incredibly important, and maybe even more important than ever because I think because a lot of people maybe who are working virtually, maybe working in different ways for the first time, you know, because of the the pandemic, um, maybe they have struggled with energy management with when you are in a different environment, maybe you're in your own, in your own home office, as you say, it's very easy, I think, for people who aren't used to doing it to become very depleted very quickly and allow themselves to become very distracted. So, and as you were saying, you know, what are some other ways you can really pay attention to your energy? Well, one of the things we recommend is to, to block your time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and let's just say you block your time in 50 minute increments. So let, let's just say you're working at home. Every yeah. 50 minutes, I would recommend to take a break. And of course, this is very easier said than done, right? Because people sure. say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And the next thing they know, they sat down for three hours. Because the mm-hmm. last hour of the three hours, you may not be as productive as the first hour. Sure. So if sure. you were to take a break every 50 minutes, you, you get up, you walk around, you go have a drink of water, or maybe you can go outside and just look at the birds or maybe even take a little walk. 
you come back in, you're going to be totally different. You, you, just, mm-hmm. you just rest yourself a little bit. Um, when I'm working you know, with dentistry, we are always focusing on this little space, right? And mm-hmm. we have the loops on and we like this, totally focused. We got to rest our eyes. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when I'm working on a long appointment, I would just stop and I would tell the patient, take a break. And I would just wake up. I mean, I'd get up and I would just leave the room. And I'm not mm-hmm. staring at that particular, you know, yeah. set of teeth until when I come back, I'm going to look at it totally different. All of a sudden say, yeah. oh, it didn't really look as good as I thought it did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so giving yourself a break, whether it's a mental break or it's a physical break where you can just stretch, or maybe it, it's more like a spiritual break. Maybe for 10 minutes, you just close your eyes and you meditate for five minutes. Mm-hmm. All of these things help you renew your energy. And when you're, when you're blocking time and you don't let people distract you, as you know, let's say if you, you're working and I interrupt yeah. you by calling you, then it's going to take you another five minutes to kind of get back to where you were. And, and, and it, if you have an, <laughs> an energy and time vampire like that, <laughs> haunting you all the long, what happens is you get tired, you get bombarded with information that is, is mm-hmm. not critical to whatever you're doing. Yeah. And you're just, you're just tired. And for, for me personally, I'm one of those people that I like moving around. So yeah, sometimes if I'm like this morning, I got several phone calls back to back and, you know, the interview with you and, and it's not my typical day, right? My typical mm-hmm. day is more getting up, seeing patients, you know, moving around. Right. So I got to prep myself a little bit different <laughs> on a day when I'm going to be more on the couch than I'm, when I'm physically uh, working. So all of that, you, you know yourself, your energy level, this is about being intentional and pay attention to it, right? Yeah. So before my energy feel depleted, I'm going to go get a drink of water. I'm going to go stretch myself a little bit. Um, some people just sitting in a different environment excites them, right? So, yeah. Like some people tell me, I have to be in the office environment to work. Well, if you set up your house, your desk, or wherever mm-hmm. you are, in an environment that, that helps you concentrate, then I think you should be able to work. So yes, allowing yes, distractions yes, yes. also take away your energy. And they, these are not big things. And a lot, sometimes when I'm sharing this, people say, oh, yeah, I already know that. Well, are you doing it every day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. How's your energy level? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, the simple doesn't equate to easy. Right. Right. I mean, these are these are simple things. But I mean, unless you do them and it takes a little bit of effort. But I like what you said there about being intentional. And I think also pay, pay, as you said, paying attention to what you do to replenish your energy. For instance, as you said, I mean, if you're taking a break after 50 minutes or whatever, but if you're immediately going to look at maybe the news or something, right? Mm-hmm. It's not going to fill you with energy. It's going to fill you with negative energy. Right. That's for sure. Right. So you have to be right. you have to be careful what you're using for your breaks. That you're using things that help replenish you and refresh you positively, not things that actually deplete you further. Excuse me. Yeah, that's exactly. I think one of the main thing with a high performer is being very intentional mm-hmm. to the point that uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's not that you're selfish, but it's, but it's like, this is not part of my agenda for today. Yeah. And therefore I'm not giving you my time, my attention, whatever it is, unless it's an emergency. And, yeah. and, and it is funny because I got trained in high performance coaching about five years ago. But then when, when I went through the coaching, I realized that I've been doing that all day long mm-hmm. because back when I first bought my practice 27 years ago, I remember telling my staff, I only take two phone calls one from the babysitter and mm-hmm. one from school, right? And then yeah. they go, what about your husband? <laughs> and I said, one from the babysitter and one from school. <laughs> <laughs> because that's usually something that demands your immediate attention, right? Yeah, yeah, if yeah, your babysitter yeah. say, your baby, something going on with your baby, or the school say, your kid fell down or whatever, but anything else, you can, you can almost always expect, <laughs> you know, I, I'll get to it. So when you're being so intentional, you just find that you become more productive just mm-hmm. because you don't allow distraction, you don't allow interruption, and then you, and then you can conserve your energy. Like I said, if you, yeah. right? No, like, I, let's take I, 10 I, minutes break and go watch CNN, and then come back, and then you start talking to the, your patient about the yeah. last shooting somewhere. It, 
It's not, it's, yeah. it's not going to no, suit. No, it's not good. It's not good. I just wanted to ask you a quick question, though. Did your husband start calling up and pretending to be the babysitter or pretending <laughs> he was from the school <laughs> in order to get no, through? No, no, he doesn't. But you, but you know how husbands are. They, they take yeah. the call for the end of the day and they say yeah. something like, what for dinner? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He doesn't know that's the instruction. Right. Oh yeah. Um, but they can well, give me he, the message. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he say, I really need to talk to her right now. Then. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, there's something going on. But yeah. Well, he knows. He's gonna know now if he watches this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so listen, in the last few moments we have, uh, Dr. Emily, what are, what are maybe another tip that you would give to people today to really pay attention to um, how they're approaching their, their, their tasks and their job? Well, I think um, one of the things that is very important for, for entrepreneurs or even just for mm. any you know, business owners or even employees is, is to know your metrics, meaning have something to gauge your performance, right? Um, so let's say you're in sales, always know your numbers. What, what are the costs that you're gonna do? Um, what, how, the percentage that you close? Why do you need to know that? Because when you're gauging that, then you can tell, you know what? Maybe I haven't been giving it 100%. Maybe mm. I haven't been intentional with my time. Maybe I haven't been that productive. I, um, I, I had a client who is a, who, um, is a uh, financial advisor, and he would go to all these networking events, right? And come back with some names. And then he would tell me, I'll call them next week. <laughs> and I don't know if he actually <laughs> called them, but I tell him, how about you go to a networking meeting and you come home with two appointments, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, don't want, I don't want 20 business cards. I want two appointments on your schedule that you're gonna be calling them. So being very intentional, you're still doing the same activity, you're still going to sure. network, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I want you to get to appointments so there's something concrete to follow. And if you have metrics like that and you're not getting the numbers that you want, then you start visiting, okay, am I, am I focused? Do I, do I give it 100%? Am I paying mm -hmm. attention? Um, do I have enough influence? Do I even have the clarity? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, there, exactly. What was, the, what was the reason why you go there? And because, it's supposed to generate the lead, and then you have to follow the lead, and you have to close. So um, I think that one would be one of the things that I would add is, you know, your your metrics, what what indicates your performance. Because I don't want you at the end of the day to say, I had a really productive today. I went to five meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, <laughs> I think that's I think that's great. That's great advice. Well, listen. Thank you, uh, Dr. Emily. All of. Uh, Dr. Emily Latran's information will be below this video here. Um, but before we go, just tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, yeah, so I, um, I was actually born in Vietnam, came to this country as a refugee back in 1981, and um, overcame a lot of challenges from mm -hmm. learning the language. You know, started with ESL, going through all the training and, and the schooling. I graduated as a dentist from UCLA. And um, it's always part of me to, to give back, to contribute, because I receive a lot during that, you know, that period. And about five years ago, I decided that I'm going to want to um, share this more extensively, share my experience. So that's where I, um, I do uh, speaking, like a keynote speaker, to share some of these nuggets mm -hmm. in, 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 in a workshop or you know, a presentation. And then also doing coaching and consulting to help people fast track um, mm -hmm. their, their, you know, their process. Um, if you're growing a business or if you're at a stagnant point and you, you're doing the same thing that you've been doing, uh, sometimes it just takes a, a fresh set of eyes, right? Yeah. And, and insight um, to tell you, well, why did you try this? Do you think this would work? Now, we, usually when I recommend certain things, I already know that it works. <laughs> <laughs> but but to, 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 to ask the client something like that so he or she can, can kind of come to that conclusion by himself or herself and then actually helping them implement. It could be, um, let, let's, say, let's say we say, okay, you should do some Facebook ads and the client doesn't mm -hmm. know any, anything about Facebook ads. I would be the connector. I would be the one, you know, giving right. the resources or, or reference. And so that, that way you can fast track rather than you just randomly trying to find somebody who can help you. And so I've been very blessed, been doing that since 2015. 
And um, so uh, it, it's great to be on your platform so I can get the, the message out to more people and hopefully yeah. help more people grow their business. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.